looking to get any experience. And the one thing is that Jabs does have a very favorable matchup in the mid lane. So we'll see how it, we'll see how it plays out. What what uh, Jarex wants to do with his movements, I think it's going to be really important uh, to dictate the early game with the Ogre Magi. Jabs and Ana both have uh, received little bits of criticism here and there based on their you know early game mid lane performance right now. So. Now they match up against each other, looking to kind of get the upper edge. And as you mentioned, on paper, the Tinker should have a little bit of leverage here. Face up top a bit, Fly trying his best to zone back Ice Ice Ice, but, you know, how often do you have the know-how on how to take on an offlane Morphling? That doesn't seem like something you scrim and practice and compete against very often. Yeah, I think Notel should just walk up and mana break him a bunch. Yeah, and he's doing that right now. Try to force him waveform, put him on the defensive as much as possible, and we'll see the waveform coming out very shortly from Ice. Yeah, he just boom, runs to the side trying not to waste his mana. So I'm curious about how he's going to be looking to item progress here. I mean, he already has the extra bit of armor, but Lots yeah. Lots of pressure already coming on XY. Lift. Jarex so body blocking, body blocking, body blocking. He needs to get closer <laughs> if he wants to get the crush, but not going to be able to get it. So XY backs off, but lots of pressure on the Slark already. Backs around now, but obviously still needs a bit more time. If he wants to get that hook online. You can see they're going for a type of priority thing. Rather than going for the safe lane tri lane to completely shut down the Morphling, they'd rather emphasize on hurting XY and forcing the supports to stay bottom so that they can't roam freely and cause a lot of pressure onto Ana, because it's already a pretty hard matchup for the Emperor versus Tinker in their early U levels. SA Sites level 2, waiting for the Bounty Rune. Almost getting on his way toward level 3. Wouldn't be too surprised if we see Black make his way up there eventually to go for those type of quick plays to just guarantee him farm. Mid lane, Ana almost goes down, but Jab is almost down. He's two to the chains. Rocket comes out. Should be fine. Yep. Flame guard. And a regen rune. How ah, convenient. The Mighty Frog has blessed us on this day, at least if you're an OG fan. Be able to snag up that regen and walk away. To do the pulls, more than likely, just to make sure there's more fun, gets more farm, because Ice is getting levels, but he's not getting any blast hits really in this top lane. Yeah. The assistance will come here in the form of Black's pull yep. soon enough. Ana getting pressured by Jabs. Jabs walking up the hill, trying to go for a solo kill. He just kills two levels in rockets. Will he get the laser? He stepped back. Will he get the laser? It's going to be really close. He's, he's got a round oh, he of oh. oh, Gets fogged again, and now Jerax is here for the rotation. Jabs in a very unfortunate situation. He is going to die for sure. That mild step back, unfortunately. He'll try to go through the fairy fire. Step back oh again. Gets God. the laser regardless. Right into the face of Ana. He'll say worth. Garrix will take the last hit on that one, but oh, bottom lane also! He's able to get a free D ward for himself. Very nice. Fly probably wants to try to deny. Or they're gonna oh, go for the kill here. Oh, Ana running Ana the corner here. Yeah. He's, through. He's got the bloodlust to kind of get him there even faster. He dishes out the laser to help mitigate it a bit, but he needs a bit more assistance. The rotations are coming. It's gonna be black on the scene. Oh, he gets the hook oh, too on the hit. the hook pullback onto Ana, and OG gotta get the hell out. Ana will be able to make it back in a way. Jarek's looking to go for the TP, but there's a lift. And there's a kill. Again for Faceless, 5 to 1. Off they go, just before. Maybe the Soul Ring into like, the Yule Scepter, so you need mm -hmm. to like, yeah, just have your mana regen as well as get multiple different stuns out. Oh, it's got to be oh. careful. Goes for the Remnant laser. Oh, oh my, my goodness, God. he gets it before he can make it away. Oh, it's a struggle for Ana in the mid lane. Jabs picks up another. Those are some mistakes that you can't make at this time. His movement here is this three man, as we've already seen the devastating oh, effects it can have. Oh, Notel stole one with his spirit barrels. Look, yep. it's like, wait, yeah, how one did they get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, nice no, A nice little play. So they actually end up splitting the bounty runes. And so the lanes are as it goes at the moment. Jarex is going to be looking to try and make this uh, this mid pull <laughs> happen with the ancients, but Crit, he knows his tricks. He's over there. Jarex is going to throw Crit oh. in range, but the stun kind of stops the ancients from punching in. At the least, it'll be enough to scare Crit away. Yeah, he just he missed actually plopping him into the ancients. They didn't draw aggro. So Crit just, yeah, trying to stop this, knowing that it is a. Uh, it's one of those things where it's like, how do you beat Sumer? You take away his farm, you take away his XP, do everything you can to try and secure this mid lane. And of Crit. course, yeah, with this Jarrett's currently doing any sort of pull, it's just kind of a support on support action here round by the Ancients. Have look quickly elsewhere on the map, what's going on, Anna? 1v1 on Samael at the moment, no sort of backup coming in for either of them. It's going to be a straight, uh, it's just showing a skill between the two of them. We get three creeps with the mid pull. It's a, uh, that's a win. Let's get a bit of success there. Top lane, S4, getting the side pull as well. Zai. Trying to do his best to zone him out, give Arteezy the space that he needs. Yeah, not zoning an Underlord with a melee support. Yeah. When your Shadow Demon's off contesting, that's the thing. Even though Jarex doesn't get that Ancient pull right away because the SD's there, the result of this is the offlaner S4 getting more out of the lane. So overall, it's still useful for Jarex to stay here. And it's actually...
stay here. And it's actually, I think EG recognizing, oh wait, this Underlord's getting too much, let's come and zone him. Uh, Sumail's just going to have to deal with having less experience, less farm in this mid lane. A full wave now being pulled to this Black Dragon camp. And down on the bottom lane, Universe at the moment 1v1 with no tail. Uh, how do you expect this lane to go? Universe is going to do pretty well. I mean, already he's picking up CS in this matchup. He does okay. It gets harder as the Spirit Bank. Once level 5, the Entangles come in, the lane gets a lot harder. But with a straight 1v1, it should be all right. It's a bit dangerous because the CM is kind of often missing from the map, getting a few levels in the jungle. And then if the Lone Druid gets a rotation from the Crystal Main, you can find yourself going down. So he doesn't want to really fall too much below half HP where he is now. In this mid lane matchup, 8 for free, 7 for 0. We did see Sumail take an early start, but these pulls certainly helping out the Alchemist in this mid lane, denying a fair bit away from what Sumail can get his hands on. Yeah, this is really obnoxious. You're not happy if you're Sumail. Doesn't mean Rubik isn't getting much. Rubik isn't level 2 yet. He hasn't been able to actually kill the dragon, but he's got another wave. I guess the full way. wave this time, so a nice pull through there from yeah, Jerax. That's two full waves in a row, actually. So I mean, there was one wave between that did slip through, but that is very, very annoying. He even comes mid, throws a Fade Bolt just to make sure that Ana takes less damage from tanking the creep wave, but see Sumail, like, even with this happening, he still is not behind on CS, but he's a lower CS than he normally would be. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of people kind of talked about Ana's weakness in the laning stage. This is certainly a way to to make sure that he's able to balance it out with Samael, who's been having a fantastic time in the mid lane street. Man, Ember's going to be really happy. He was the one that actually claimed the first blood there. So by picking up first blood, he's able to get enough money to get close to his bottle, and maybe with a little bit of help from Jirax, the roaming in, the ogre becomes the target. Becomes the target instead of having someone like the invoker being going on. So in a way, invoker does do his work. Is limited on levels though. You want to get as much XP as possible onto the Invoker. Ogre is kind of soaking up this. He does get rolled on into the mid lane, and this could be second blood right there. Wow, I didn't actually think you'd go back in again. Yeah, he kind of just walked down the hill and then got rolled on. So it was, uh. Gotta respect the Earth Spirit, man. Yeah, that's that time where you almost start to check out other lanes like I was doing. It's like, oh, I wonder how S4 is doing on the top. Because I know when S4 plays his clockwork, especially up against a Life Stealer, it's not an uncommon matchup for him to have. He gets really, really aggressive. I, he'll push up always with cogs, always looking to burn off any kind of manner of the life stealer, just making it as an opportunity for him to potentially gank out. Like Jakura doesn't care. He's a Jakura with liquid fire level one, so he doesn't he doesn't mind if he if he has mana burn. That's a good trade off for him. And he was able to get that last hit on a lot of the creeps there. The range creep, the big one with the uh, rocket. So a lot of gold going his way, that will be it. So I think it's been worth it for him. And Sven and Life Sword CS is roughly equal, despite the clockwork being up here. So I do like uh, the amount of farm coming out from IG's offlaner, XSS. I was wondering too, like how, how you then build the build uh, on him, on Jirax, a little bit of trouble. As you're finally your point up in Quas, so Cold Snap keeps the Earth Spirit under control. Did they see the, no, they didn't see the Jakiro coming. They only see the Ogre. Now they'll see the Chikiro. So first stuns, the dual breath as well. All is going to connect with Cold Snap. The ticks just continue on the Ember Spirit. And it's this double combination when you've got both Alacrity as well as having... And once he sees that, there is no camp here, sir. Maybe uh, he can actually creep the Ancients too. I think it's uh, not that difficult. He realizes. Yep. He realizes the horrible, horrible truth. He has to play the lane. It's not that bad because you already denied the range creep, but uh, on the flip side, we have no tail who already blocked the range creep and his is dead. So in this game, we we can talk about the, the range DPS druid. Yes. Is this one of these games where you... Always. Okay. I don't think you pick the hero is, unless is you want to go for range Is there any DPS. situation where you still build up on the bat? Uh, I think if you die a lot and you can't afford to go range anymore, but... I think the talents are just way too good for the ranged DPS druid. Smell seems to be roaming around a little bit. He's ah. he's lost the mid. <laughs> In fact, it's a pull by Jirax. He's managed to get the tower. So, Mojian, if they saw it, they'll know it's on cooldown. I'm wondering if they were considering sending him up, or if it's just a misclick. Mid lane, Sumail's positioned quite nicely on the right side. He's got three man Sonic Wave and commits both! Finds a very quick pop on Anna. He's got a haste route available. Got to trigger it. Bottle up quickly. No one charge. Available fly. Turning on the Sunray. Samel needs a move of speed to get away, but he's actually ticking down. Bottle charges. He's got enough to survive. 
getting away with murder right under the noses of the other OG heroes. The entire rest of the game, however, that I, <laughs> I think is unlikely, fortunately. I like this uh, dual offlane scenario they got going on here. EGM up here. It's going to body block out the small camp first, just so when they pulling. Uh, once there's two supports up here, probably not going to be quite as fun, just because of short range of Morphling, as well as the fact that you're a uh, melee hero for EGM. So how do you feel about these drafts all together? I mean, you talked about each, you talked about the gyrocopter, you talked about the gyrocopter counter, but who do you feel has the, the advantage going into the game? Oh, nice, uh, nice stun up top here from Jarex. Is he going to kill him? He has waveform. He should live. Yoni's living life on the edge. He's fine. Okay, he's good. Now EGM's getting hit. And here comes the Phoenix. I mean, that's a, that's a tough lane. There's a lot of damage. If you hit that torrent, you're in trouble, but... I anyway. think it's pretty hard not to favor the Dire Side Draft. I just... I feel like if they can't stop these eggs from getting off, it's just gonna be so difficult to deal with them. As you can understand, going for, like, the Fire Spirits on top of someone like Loda, then he's just gonna overpower and he can kill the egg, which is great. Maybe Alliance have that time and we'll have that perfect moment. Oh, that is a replicate. At least they know it is, it's their hero at the very least. Yep, yep. Ethereal on Anna, Blinks disjoints it nicely, no tail looking for GM. Looking for that stomp, and I think they might get it on Loda. He does have that Aegis, remember, he's gonna get in range. Torrent's gonna come out, they have the ghost ship, where is it? Not there. Backed up here, and they're looking for more. Blink is ready to go, Blink's done in two if they can get there in time. Now Anna coming in, they want Loda, they get the shackle. Oh, the shackle! Oh, that's the Aegis gone. Now they drop the egg as well, can they get more? Yoda's gonna see Ethereal build up. Good static storm, but no tail is BKB. Loda's trying to get out, they might lose Jonas here, he's low, not dead yet. Now pop the cheese, he's still ready to go. Anna looking to fight. On to S4, Shackle Shot, they find Yotis again, but he's still okay, he doesn't last the tree. A couple more auto attacks, look at the kill. Now the ghost ship comes in. Can they get Loda a second time? Flip's about to fall, double kill for Fly. Loda, Rod, he's got the Hitos up. Now he's gonna try to get out. Yotis is coming in from the back lines. Blank. They will find Hanskin though, he's gonna go down. Anna's looking for well, more. They want the bear though. Shackle! Shackle! What a shackle from Anna. Gets it. Can they bring Loda down? They've got the damage. Hex marks is back. They oh kill him. Oh my! Get for 110 and 103 seconds for Limp on the gyrocopter. Three down, and all they have to do is push that mid. Is that was a filthy shackle. Oh, <laughs> that was, that was pretty dirty. Sick. Man, S4 just—he held them back to the fight.